The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. Jason Bryant back here again at Super Bowl 52 Media Week at the Mall of America in Minneapolis. You've heard what the Philadelphia Eagles had to say about Penn State and Ohio State on Saturday, February 3rd. Now it's time to hear what the New England Patriots have to say here on Short Time. College in the state of Iowa knows a little bit about the sport of wrestling. I'm going to ask you right now, big event coming up on Saturday. Number one, Penn State. Number two, Ohio State. Who you got in the duel? Uh, you know what? I don't know a whole lot about either team, but I'll take Penn State. I know they're well coached. I can tell you that. When it comes to... Professional football coaches identifying talent at the college level. How deep do you guys look in terms of, of a background of a lineman and say, all right, you know, if you've got wrestling in their background, you're going to maybe pay a little bit more attention to them? You know, I don't know how big of a deal that is, honestly. Um, I personally enjoy the sport of wrestling, and so I, I do think there's a certain uh, work ethic, mentality, um, kind of an intangible as- aspect of things that would – make me more interested in digging into a guy like that um I, I think you do you know through the process of evaluating players you're looking for the overall picture but that's certainly a part of it we have so many kids now specializing in sports and we still have a a a, a faction of the high school football coaches say no you're going to lift in the summer you're not going to do anything your football 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 how much does it help to have a well-rounded athlete coming into the nfl as a d lineman versus a kid that's only played football yeah, you know, I think there's um, – obviously there's guys that comes in, in all kinds of different makes, models, and sizes. But I do think some of the um, the training, some of the different uh, physical elements of playing more sports is definitely uh, – it's not a disadvantage, I'll put it that way. Um, I don't know if, you know, a guy playing multiple things necessarily makes him better than somebody else. Um, but I certainly do like to see that type of a background. Um, I don't know if there's a direct correlation in terms of, you know, the quality of that player versus another player that might not have it, but um, it's definitely something that, that you take note of. One of the more imposing presences in the wrestling world is a former offensive lineman for the New England Patriots, Stephen Neal. And when when you're training your guys on, on the defensive line, how many wrestling tactics do you think it, you kind of, you know, try to pull out of them or, or maybe teach like yeah these are these are things that translate over to football or is it something that's just kind of inherent in a lot of these guys they already have well i think uh there's certainly some of the things in terms of leverage in terms of uh you know angles in terms of body positioning that directly correlate to wrestling and a wrestling background can give you some familiarity with that it's interesting a lot of guys that i coach or come across i will ask you know were, were you a wrestler at one point and, and more so after watching them work and watching them feel things um you know, in my experience, I have seen wrestlers that have kind of a natural knack or feel for some of the interior line play in that regard. Um, I wasn't here in New England when Steve Neal was here. I know of him, but I can't speak to, you know, uh, him specifically. But uh, a number of guys that I've coached defensive line-wise throughout my career have had an element of wrestling background that uh, I certainly think serves them well. As we come back to now, this, the Twin Cities hosting, you know, spending, spending your college career in Iowa, this, the weather's not exactly foreign to you, but, uh, you know, what's, what's this experience been like for you as a coaching staff? You know, it's been great. Um, I actually coached for five years here with the Vikings, so um, I'm, I'm very familiar with the weather here and uh, loved living here and the, the embracing of the winter elements here. I enjoyed, to be honest. Um, it, uh, it's been a good experience, although, you know, we've been so focused on the game and what we've got to do. To be honest, we haven't gotten out and experienced a whole lot of it other than, you know, traveling from the hotel here over to the facility to practice and then back. Um, not a whole lot of time for the rest of it. What would you rather eat coming back here, hot dish or, uh, or a nice fried walleye? Well, the fried walleye is fantastic. Um, hot dish, I, I, I have an affinity for, although the Juicy Lucy, I'm very partial to here in the city of Minneapolis. Uh, but great restaurants and, and great food here all the way around, to be honest. 
One thing that we noticed on opening night is that when the Patriots came out to the big, to the uh, on the stage area at the Excel, it, it wasn't like everybody. Not everybody had their phones out. You know, it's a lot of a lot of the guys have been there, done that. Whereas the Eagles are are out there, they're taking it all in. They're, they're Snapchat, they're Instagramming, they're 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 everybody's got their phone out. Uh, is it something that the experience with the Patriots in this game is says, okay, we've we've done this, we know that there's business to attend to. Well, I think, you know, certainly guys have been through that experience and know a little bit of the, you know, the media circus that it is, if you will. Um, I don't know that that experience, you know, plays much of a factor. It certainly plays no factor whatsoever when we get to kick off on Sunday night. And ultimately, the goal is to win the game. And none of that experience is going to help win the game. Really, what is going to win the game is who performs best on Sunday. Now with Joe Judge, special teams coach of the New England Patriots. First things first, the big sporting event here is you guys on Sunday, but there's, there's a big one in our community, number one Penn State, number two Ohio State. Who do you got? I'm going Penn State. I'm a Pennsylvania guy. You know, once you kind of get west of Philadelphia, it kind of decreases a little bit for us. So by the time you get to Ohio, we got to go Pennsylvania all the way. <laughs> in, in the world of special teams, how often is it you guys are encountering wrestlers or, or, or players that have wrestling backgrounds? You know, it's not uncommon. I know uh, – Ross Ventrone's a player who played for us. His brother Bubba Ventrone works with us on the special teams. He was a wrestler growing up. He played special teams. I think it's just a combination of tough kids who are good athletes. You know, if you got good endurance and, and good muscle tone explosion like you need to be in a wrestling, that translates good into the kicking game for us. When you look at the dynamic of special teams, it can mean so many different things. It's more than just the kicker and the punter. It's the kickoff team. It's the return teams. You know, it's, you've got to wear a lot of hats. How do you do that? As, how do you deal with that as a coach? How do I deal with which part? Can you be more- All of it. I mean, you got to wear a lot of different hats with special teams. you got 53 guys on the roster. Each one of them responds differently. Each one of them learns differently. you better figure out each guy individually and be able to coach a group but reach all the individuals as well. We were talking to Coach Daly about multi-sport athletes and how uh, you know there's so much sports specialization now with these days with kids. When you're looking at a player, maybe to pick them up on a practice squad or, or, or that is competing in, in spring, uh, spring training, in the preseason for, for a special team spot, how much are you looking at their multi-sports background? I don't know that we necessarily take a multi-sports background into bringing a guy into our roster now. I think it's going to be whoever is best suited for the roster spot. I can speak from days working in college with recruiting. I always think multi-sport athletes, guys who play up doing multiple things, are better well-rounded. I have four children of my own. I don't think any one of them uh, – should be specialized in anything look i'm not relying on be my 401k either but just in general you should grow up playing as many sports as you can developing as much a background on everything as you can and a lot of times that transfers over nate ebner's a guy for us who's you know one of the best special teams players in the league you know he was in the olympics for rugby last year this is definitely something that's helped him you know within his craft of being a special teams guy or a lot of the skill sets he's picked up on the other side Circling this back around to wrestling again, in terms of what attributes do you see from players that, that you've seen that have had wrestling backgrounds that have kind of given them, you know, they may not have had the, the stellar accolades in college, but it's maybe their wrestling is made up for their, what they, they maybe, maybe lacked in terms of a power program, like, you know, coming out of the SEC. I think they play nasty. There's a lot of not quit. You know, in wrestling, you can't quit when you're tired. You can only quit when the other guy's tired. And I think that that's a great quality to have in any sport. But definitely guys that we've come across – they carry that, you know, through the final whistle mentality of they're getting after you. Now with Adrian Waddle, the New England Patriots, big sporting event coming up this weekend. I got to know, who do you got? Number one, Penn State. Number two, Ohio State, college wrestling. Let's go Ohio State. I got, I got, I got some, uh, some good buddies that are Ohio State alumni, so. All right, keeping things on where this is going, we're talking about wrestling here in terms of the ability. You don't have a wrestling background, do you? You do not, but the state of Texas has got uh, some pretty good wrestlers coming out of there. When you had to go up against another lineman that's got a wrestling background, do you know that immediately? Uh, I think uh, in, in probably like my earlier years of playing, you kind of noticed because you could tell guys use their hands a little better than other guys. Like we had a guy at Tech, Kobe Whitlock. He used to, he used to wrestle. I think he's from Oklahoma, though. But uh, he, uh, you could kind of tell the way he played. It was more like a wrestling style. He kind of used that to his advantage. When it comes to the Super Bowl here in Minneapolis, what's the experience been like for you? Uh, it's been great. You know, we, we've, you know, obviously preparing for the game, and you know, then we got these media deals too, which some guys hate, but you know, I think it's all right. I think it's kind of cool, and I think you get, you know, a bunch of, bunch of questions that you're not really prepared for, but you kind of just roll with them and have fun with it. What's been your favorite spot here in the Mall of America so far? Favorite spot? Uh, 
No, I haven't been around too much because I'm, I'm afraid of all the people swarming me. But uh, we went and ate at Cowboy Jackson. I thought the food there was pretty good. It's actually one right down the street from me where I live. I live about 15 minutes from here. But as, it, as it, you look around and you see, you know, you said it's a media circus. At any point, how do, how do you learn to deal with stuff like this? I mean, because you're getting off-the-wall questions. You're getting some of the same questions over and over from various different people that are, you know, they're not in the same time you are. But how does a professional athlete kind of cope with this type of situation? Uh, you just kind of try to stay cool, man. You just just take it for what it is. You know, there's, <laughs> there's no, like, even stuff, you know, you got to not take stuff personal if, if it's kind of taking a shot at you, you feel like. You know, it's just a question. So, Well, good luck on Sunday, and you were the first guy so far between either team to pick Ohio State. <laughs> Thanks. Now with Joe Tooney, New England Patriots, the, the, the pressing question to everybody's mind here in Minneapolis, who's going to win, number one Penn State, number two Ohio State in college wrestling on Saturday? Wow, I didn't realize they were that key matchup. Um, I'll have to say, since I'm from Ohio, Ohio State, but I'm not sure. Well, the reason we bring it up is I saw that uh, you're an NC State guy, and there was a pretty good wrestler recently out of NC State, Nick Wisdowski, two-time national champion, four-time All-American. And uh, ever crossed paths with him on campus? Um, nothing too formal or anything. You know, said hello, but, you know, he brought a lot of pride to NC State. And, uh, you know, great competitor, obviously an elite wrestler. So far, this table, I've been here all week. I've interviewed a bunch of Eagles now, and now we're working through the Patriots coaches. But you two are the first two to pick Ohio State, although at least you've got the Ohio relevance. He's from Texas. So uh, I at least give you a pass on that. Yeah. Um, I think Penn State has a pretty good wrestling tradition, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, yeah, it's, I guess, just a coin flip. I'm not, I don't know much about either. Actually, you're, you're pretty spot on. It might be a coin flip with, with injuries. But when it comes to the sport of wrestling, which is uh, what we're here talking to players about, uh, any, any opportunities to wrestle growing up, or was it something that you were just focusing on other sports? Uh, I played basketball in the winters, but um, I always you know, thought wrestlers were it'd be you know, super beneficial for football you know, with balance and toughness and you know, um, your, you know, just technique and toughness. So I've always respected wrestlers. So if you grew up in Ohio, it's a really good wrestling state there at a high school level. You know, any, any, any wrestlers from your hometown that you remember? None that come to mind. Nothing, nothing that jumps out, yeah. All right, spe- spinning things over here to Minneapolis, and, and what's this experience been like up here? It's, been a, it's, it's a cold weather climate. We're used to it. We, even though I'm from Virginia, I'm still getting used to it here. But, uh, you know, what, what's the experience been like uh, outside of the weather? Yeah, it's been great. Uh, you know, the people have been awesome. The fans have been awesome. And, it's great being attached to the Mall of America. You know, it's a huge, expansive mall and every store you can think of. So um, a lot of fun so far. If there was one store in this mall that you could take your mom to, what would it be? Does Chipotle count? <laughs> yeah, it counts. There you go. All right, what's your favorite store in the mall so far? Um, they, we, as an offensive line, we had a good, uh, good lunch at Cowboy Jack's. It was good. This table again unanimous with Cowboy Jacks and Ohio State. So, well, uh, best of luck to you guys in the game on Sunday. Thanks for your time. Thank Coach you, Steve really Belichick, one thing that's going on this weekend, big number one, number two, Penn State versus Ohio State. College wrestling, who you got? Um, Ohio State. And yeah, my wife went to uh, graduate school at Ohio State, so no-brainer. Switching back up, uh, Roddy White was an all-pro wide receiver. The Atlanta Falcons was, was a wrestler in high school. You don't see a whole lot of wrestlers in skill positions. You see a lot of them on the line and, and in, in the linebacker core. But uh, in your experiences, being able to finish a tackle, being able, like you said, get a get guy to the ground and you know, maybe with that explosive double leg, how much do you think it's helpful for a guy that wants to be in the NFL as, as a skill position, as a defensive back, to, to have maybe some, some of that finishing ability with those double legs and those takedowns for tackles? Uh, yeah, like I said before, I don't think it's uh, crucial to their success, but it's um, it's definitely beneficial. Um, you know, I got to uh, uh, spend a lot of time with Steve Neal, who was a, a former wrestler and uh, transitioned into an amazing offensive guard. Um, just uh, tremendous work ethic and discipline and technique and focus and um yeah what he did when he uh came to the new england patriots was pretty special steve neal is a outstanding man what's been the most enjoyable thing to you about this uh, very cold weather climate we have up here in minneapolis uh yeah no problems i i can handle the cold i'm good with the cold i like the snow grew up in boston cleveland yeah no problems up here now here with Patriots, Bernard Reedy. We got a one pressing question we got to ask about this big sporting event coming up this weekend. Number one, Penn State. Number two, Ohio State. College wrestling. Who you got? Uh, wrestling. Uh, Penn State. 
Oh, guy went to Toledo picking against Ohio State. I love it. I love it. But, uh, you know, in terms of the game here in Minneapolis, uh, what's this experience been like for you? Oh, it's been surreal for me. Uh, blessed. I feel real fortunate. Uh, this, this is the first Super Bowl I've ever been a part of, and it's just a real blessing to me. Uh, coming out of the MAC and MACTION with, with Toledo, there's, you know, it's regarded, you know, it's outside of the Power Five, the opportunities to get the NFL. I mean, what type of opportunities were afforded to you coming out of Toledo and the MAC to say, all right, I can make an NFL roster, I can play in the Super Bowl one day? Uh, well, we're going on, we're going on drafted. That was that was all I needed. You know, I just needed a shot, and you know, I took my shot and ran with it. I had a, some ups and downs, but you know, I'm still pushing. What's one thing that, being an undrafted free agent, you see a lot of people that have various backgrounds. I mean, you guys, from Toledo guys from the big programs, I like got over here from Miami. You got guys from Division Two and Division Three, all fighting for roster spots. What do you do to set yourself apart and make a team like the New England Patriots? Oh, I think you just gotta you just gotta keep pushing. Do what you know how to do best, and that's work hard. Do what you do what you did to get you to college, and as far as you know in life, I just use my my daily life habits to just to get me up and above. So, what's your favorite store at the Mall of America? Chick Fil A. <laughs> yes, yeah, I I can't sum it up any better than that. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Now with long snapper Joe Cardona here. The question we've got that's pressing this big sporting event that's coming up this weekend. Who do you got? Number one, Penn State. Number two, Ohio State. College wrestling. Oh, college wrestling. I, I will partial to partial to my Navy wrestlers. Let's be real, um, Naval Academy guy. But um, let's see. I one of my best friends on the team is Nate Ebner, um, and uh, he's an Ohio State guy. But I played against Penn State, so I'm gonna go with Penn State. I was wondering where you were going with, with to come up with that answer. Now, the question, any wrestling background for you? I wrestled when I was young. Uh, you know, I, I finished a little bit before high school, but, uh, you know, I have a little bit of experience. As does uh, Rick Lovato, long snapper for, for the Eagles, so he actually wrestled in through high school. But he was talking about kind of the, the toiling and anonymity sometimes of the long snapper position, similar to that of, of a wrestler. What have you, you know, what, what, what's your opinion of, of your position your role on the team and, and how it relates to basically very, very little coverage yeah no I you know there's definitely uh, you know that piece of anonymity and you know you do your job without being uh, noticed hopefully um, that's kind of one of the one of the benefits as long as you're you know you want your name out of the news unlike most players um, but for the most part uh, you know it, it's obviously a great um, you know, a great position to play. I mean, it's great to get this opportunity, definitely. Anything that you draw from your wrestling background, you know, wrestling in middle school, that, that plays a role into your long snapping position? Ah, uh, good question. Um, you know, I I think uh, I, I think it just, you know, I can look back at those times and know I gained a lot of confidence on, on the on the wrestling mat. And then, you know, further into college, you know, you get into, we got into grappling and some martial arts stuff, um, you know, being at a military school. So, I think I think you know that um, there's a, there's that degree of confidence from you know hand to hand combat you could say. <laughs> well, you've got that of course with like the combatives with the academies. I lived out near the the Air Force Academy for a while in Colorado, and when you go through life at the Naval Academy, the NFL usually isn't a dream for a lot of those type of guys. Opportunity to compete in the NFL, compete in the Super Bowl, going into the academy. I mean, how realistic did you think that was for you? Zero uh, percent chance. There's no chance. I, I I thought I would be in. You know this situation today. Um, you know, obviously, been fortunate to to get a few opportunities throughout the way, and all I, all I could have ever hoped for was an op- was a chance and an opportunity. And um, you know, I'm doing my best to make the most of it and earn it every day. To tie things back into wrestling a little bit, uh, I noticed with uh, you know Lovato and, and he was hanging around the kicker and the punter. I mean, you guys are kind of a unit, and is that something where it's like like wrestling? You guys are training partners. You guys are you know balancing it off. If, if one's having a bad day, you you pick the, each other up. I mean, what's that relation like with with your specialists? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great way of putting it. Um, you know, it's it, it doesn't it, it doesn't matter what you do on your own. You know, it, it matters what you do as a unit um, for for the specialists. Uh, so. You know, to make sure each other are doing well and make sure we're able to compete at the highest level, um, you know, that's what's really important. So to take it back to wrestling, like you said, there's a, there's that element of, of making each other better every day so that we can go out and compete and, and do our best on the on the stage. What were your career goals going into the academy? Um, you know, I wanted to be a pilot initially. Uh, I, I wanted to, 
to fly jets, but uh, unfortunately I got disqualified for, um, you know, a, a medical, you know, a, it was actually body proportion, but uh, no no worries there, um, you I know. A, I, have a, I have a different problem with body proportion. But <laughs> yeah, uh, but, you know, it is, uh, it, it opened up the door for me to, to pursue football a little bit harder at that point, and, um, you know, it uh, as much as I wish that uh, you know I was flying jets right now, this is a pretty cool backup plan. The Super Bowl, pretty cool consolation prize. Now, in terms of the succession of going from you know, to a long snapper, when did you first start long snapping? Is this something that's like you, you became good at in high school, and then okay, you, that was your roster spot at Navy, or was it just something that you kind of grew into at the Naval Academy? Yeah, no, my uh, I always kind of grew up doing it. My dad would have me snapping before practices when I was a kid, and uh, you know I. I Developed myself in high school, uh, along with you know my other positions, and um, you know really worked worked at the craft, and it and it gave me an opportunity to go to college, and to go to you know the Naval Academy, which was definitely my dream school. So it was a uh, you know that that was more than I could have ever asked for, and then to be here, I'm definitely playing with dealer money as far as that goes. I'm uh, I'm I'm pretty happy, uh, you know, obviously happy with how it worked out, but. Uh, you know, it's something that I can remind myself of how I need to work every day to keep it going. It's the hardest you've been hit in a game. Oh, yeah. The hardest <laughs> I've been hit in a game, I mean, helmet, sideways, you know, picking myself up off the ground, you know, knowing I was going to be hurt the next day. Uh, definitely took a took a few. Uh, that was in a Miami game. But, uh, you know, it was uh, definitely some uh, a painful memory there. But uh, not too bad. That's one thing as far as being, you know, protective of your teammates and whatnot. Uh, when when the specialists are out there and we'll say there's there's a punt return or things like that, are you looking? You watching uh, your punter and your kickers back when they might be having to, to make the saving tackle? Or are you in there in the trenches too, going, "I'm going to get these guys before you do"? Uh, I'm definitely trying to get them before they get to they get to the um, to our punter. Uh, you know, there's no way I want to let it get to that point because that's a pretty good return. Um, you know, the punter doesn't look very good in those situations ever. Yeah, it's 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 a tough position to be in. You know, you're you're doing your best to make sure that the guy doesn't. Uh, it's, it's a superior athlete back there, far better than myself or our punter. The other guys have a better chance than us. But um, you know, I, I'd like to get down there and uh, you know make a few tackles. That's definitely one of the more fun parts of the position. The Short Time Wrestling Podcast is proudly outfitted by Compound Clothing. Shirts, singlets, custom gear orders, everything you need. Call up Cliff and the crew at cmpteamwear.com. First time listening? Well, you can change that by going to matttalkonline.com slash get short time to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or listen on your favorite podcatcher at matttalkonline.com slash listen. This show is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.